Hey guys, it's David. Uh, it is Sunday, November the 12th, um, Sunday evening, and I am um, just popping on here to give you guys a, a quick update <clears throat> and to thank each one of you for um, uh, those of you who have supported us, are supporting us monthly, uh, things like that, that you're, you're doing through the Gifts and Go app. Um, I, I can't begin to, to tell you how that makes the impossible possible for my family. And um, thank you for being that miracle. Thank you for listening to the Holy Spirit when they when He nudges you to to do things like that. I cannot thank you enough. Um, and of course for praying for me and for my family. Thank you for <clears throat> not just praying, but standing and believing in faith. Um, one thing that I've noticed that th through my years in, of being in church, being in ministry, is I know a lot of people who've met Jesus. But they're as blind spiritually <clears throat> 30 years, 40 years later as they were before they were saved. It doesn't mean they're not saved. Um, it means that their eyes have not been opened because uh, they rarely get into this word. They rarely <clears throat> understand it, and they rarely pursue or ask for anything. They don't know about faith. They don't know about grace. And... Um, all they know is they got their ticket to heaven, and, and that's all they need to know. And man, what a shame. What a shame, because um, you never know that you're being distracted until you see what you've missed. And I want you to see what you're missing. Uh, from day one, um, uh, when I first requested that you guys join me in, in this journey to healing, in praying with me and for me and for our family, um, I immediately saw, I had a vision of what I'm going to look like when I've been healed, what I'm going to be doing. And um, these video updates uh, are a glimpse into what I believe what I'll be doing after this, and that is sharing my story, sharing the gospel, and how much the Word of God has to say about healing. Because folks, if there's ever been a time when we need hope, um, it's now. It is now. Um, so I just want to thank thank you guys, and um, and and share with you something about what you're able to see because I need you to see what I see. Um, you remember in Acts chapter nine, Paul's on the road to Damascus, and uh, he was Saul. He was not a good dude, <laughs> not a good dude. He was equivalent to the modern day ISIS. I mean, he, he that's how bad he hated Christians, and he would put them in jail and he would kill them and. Uh, he was he was not a guy you wanted to see coming if you were a Christian. Uh, but he was on his way to Damascus when he met Jesus on the road. Uh, a bright light surrounded him, and he had a conversation with Jesus. And um, he met Jesus right there. But God blinded his eyes for three days. So for three days, uh, Paul was, you know, pretty much defenseless and... Um, he was in the dark, literally in the dark, and it didn't matter how bright of a, the sun was. He was he was blinded. He was in darkness um, until his eyes were opened, and he became Paul the apostle. Um, so I want you guys to. And there, there's one more uh, couple verses that I want to share with you because I need you to see what I see and what people of faith, people who exercise exercise faith, what they see. Because they see a, a different reality than what most people see on the surface. So I'll give you a little backstory on this. Uh, I'm in 2 Kings chapter 6. I'm going to start in verse 15. I'm just going to read a few verses here, but just kind of give you the backstory. Uh, the uh, the, Ar the, the uh, Arameans were against Israel, and they were they were in, at war with Israel. Uh and the king of Aram uh, was getting so frustrated because every time he would meet with his military and give his military uh, people the orders and the plan of attack and what they were going to do next, God would reveal that to Elisha the prophet, and Elisha would go to the king of Israel, and he would say, listen, this is what they're about to do, and this is how we can defeat them. And the king of Aram was really mad when he found out that Elisha was the one uh, kind of giving uh, secret intel, top secret intel to the king of Israel. Um, 
so the king of Aram says, where is Elisha? Uh, because I'm going after him. That's how big of a threat God's people are to a corrupt government. I'll just throw that in there for free. Um, so he sends a major army. Uh, they're, the plan is they're going to take out Elisha. And uh, so starting in verse 15, check this out. When the servant of the man of God, Elisha, got up early and went out, he discovered an army with horses and chariots surrounding the city. So he asked Elisha, Oh, my master, what are we going to do? Now, I want you to think about this. Um, this guy has been with Elisha. He's watched miracle after miracle after miracle. And he's kind of like an understudy to Elisha. Uh, or he's certainly in the position to be. But listen to what Elisha said. Elisha said, don't be afraid, for those who are with us outnumber those who are with them. Now listen, Elisha declared this before he looked out and saw it. Because we saw what, what his servant saw, right? He just saw the enemy all around. Then Elisha prayed, this is powerful, Lord, please open the eyes, open his eyes and let him see. So the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw that the mountain was covered with horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Man, that's that's good. Um, so I guess my point is this. When you really step into faith, especially a faith that you're so sure of that you know, you're that confident. Um, one, you do not fight alone. Uh, God sends an angel army, and I, I honestly believe um, that according to what Ephesians talks about, that if if we could see what's going on around us, if our eyes would be open to see what really is going on, our perception of what we think is reality would completely change because um, when you begin to see in faith what God is doing and what he's going to do, um, he sends a big army. He sends a big army. And um, in Ephesians, it talks about how we, our war is not against flesh and blood, but it is against spiritual wickedness in high places, powers and principalities. So if we could see that battle that's going on around us, how much more confident would we be uh, when we start to think that we're alone or we start to think that a situation is hopeless? When you, when you get in that position, what do you see? It's really important what you see and your ability to know what's going on even when you can't see it at the moment. Um, so I, I just wanted to... Again, thank you all for everything. Uh, I can't tell you how special you are to, to me and my family. And um, continue to pray for us, uh, for strength, for peace. Man, I can't, I can't tell you uh, what the peace of God has been like through this whole journey. It's just been incredible. And uh, sometimes it's through people that just overwhelms us that God works, and then other times it's just uh, miraculous. And so thank you. And today, if you are a believer and you doubt the assurance that we have um, based on the promises of God, ask yourself before you declare and choose a certain reality, what should I really be seeing here? because it'll change everything for, for you, and it's going to change everything for me. We love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.